you know, GFAL is starting to wake up. When I talked about it, price was hovering around one cent not too long ago. Now it's over two cents. But I still believe better days are ahead because I think it's just a small taste we're seeing right now. Because ultimately, I still take a look at GFAL as hypothetically going to the price of $2 during this bull run. And now, of course, nothing I say is financial advice nor a guarantee. But for the people out there that think that, oh, wow, GFAL pumped too much, keep in mind, $2 is still over an 85x from here. So it's not bad at all. And I think that when it comes to GFAL, it has the fundamentals to achieve $2, hypothetically, because you take a look at how it's a utility token used across the games for a living network and games. And when it comes to this, I think it's very fantastic because as the name goes, you know, Games for a Living is, of course, focused on blockchain gaming, which a lot of people may think that, uh, you know, it's kind of caca, a lot of the hype did die down. And granted, a lot of the hype did, you know, die down, but I think better days are ahead because you take a look at, according to Grandview Research, the blockchain gaming market is expected to be worth over $300 billion by 2030. You know, we have to also consider this. 2030 isn't like, you know, a decade away, right? I mean, it's just around five years away at this point. Keep in mind, we're nearing 2025. So that's insane. And guess what happens once the wave for blockchain gaming jumps back in again? You know, once the hype, you know, the FOMO, all that type of good stuff, you know, joins back to blockchain gaming, but then in a better way this time around. You know, only projects that are really focused on it right now, if you really think about it, are the ones that are going to prosper because... You know, they've been anticipating that this whole time, much like games for a living. They didn't give up. They didn't stop. So then again, once the hype goes in, they're going to be there to catch the wave, so to speak. I think it's much better, you know, anticipating something as opposed to chasing it. So I really love projects that are focused on a certain niche, a certain market, and they don't give up even despite the sentiment. And that's exactly what I'm taking a look at here, which is why I really believe in it. And the way I view games for a living is that they're quite essentially looking to revolutionize a market again that could be worth over $300 billion in the very near future. Because you take a look at how a lot of blockchain gaming projects out there, let's face it, you know, the quality of the games they have out, it's just complete caca. It's completely embarrassing. I mean, it feels like it's kind of a game made like 15 years ago, but then it's made right now. But then it just feels like a lot of these projects, they want to slap together some games and then just be like, oh yeah, we made a blockchain game. But when it comes to games for a living, they're not like that. They're changing the way people take a look at it in terms of quality. Because for instance, you take a look at a game that they have out. It's called Elemental Raiders. This right here, I think, is a total game changer. Now, you may be thinking, okay, graphics are not like Batman level, but it doesn't have to because you have to consider the competition. It's relatively very caca. You know, Elemental Raiders, it looks fun. It looks enticing, and it looks like it's heading in the right direction, again, when it comes to the category of blockchain gaming. So, man, the way you take a look at games for a living is that it's pretty much A-plus all across the board. And also, let's take this into consideration. They're also focused on NFTs. Now, some people out there, they may clown this because they're like, ah, you know, NFTs, this is trash, right? You know, Bored Ape Yacht Club, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, you know, this is a thing of the past. And even though back in 2021, granted, you know, Bored Apes, Mutant Apes, they did help, you know, increase the recognition of NFTs. I think there are, again, better days ahead, much like blockchain gaming. Because yet again, according to Grandview Research, the NFT market is predicted to be worth over $200 billion, also by 2030. So yeah, that's very impressive. So if you take a look at, you know, the markets that Games for a Living is focused on, you know, it's not a cacao whatsoever. And why would it be bad? I mean, you got to consider how their team, they clearly understand what they're doing. You know, for instance, right, we take a look at Manel Sort. Now, this person right here is a real deal individual. He's the CEO and, you know, co-founder of Games for a Living. And amazingly enough, you know, in the past, he was once, you know, or should I say at one point, the first ever vice president at Activision Blizzard King. Now, we all know about Activision, you know, Blizzard is massive. So, of course, we know all that, right? But during his time there, he actually spearheaded projects much like Call of Duty Mobile. I mean, of course, we know that. Also, on top of that, we take a look at, you know, Action Toys. He also spearheaded that. Now, Action Toys probably isn't as popular, but come on, this is still a very amazing resume. So when it comes to its team, you know, it's pretty much on par with many good projects out there. It's not like it has a caca random team behind it. No, that's not the case. Also, on top of that, we take a look at another member of their team, a person by the name of Trip Hawkins. Now, when I say his name, for the people who know, they may be like, what, actually him? But then it's actually, you know, to other people, they may think, who's this person? But in case, you know, it's for the second crowd, for me think, who's this guy? 
Trip Hawkins happens to be the founder of EA. And yes, you heard that right. I'm talking about EA. You know, sometimes we play games in the past. EA Sports. It's in the game, if you know what I mean. Some people say I do a pretty good, you know, I would say pronunciation of that. But even besides that point, EA, I mean, this is just legendary stuff right here. Electronic Arts, we have that person as part of the Games for a Living team. This is some real deal stuff right here. It's not any nonsense that people talk about because they like to say, oh, wow, Games for a Living is caca, it's trash. No, it's not true. If you have a good project, in my opinion, and then there's amazing leadership on top of that, that's like the icing on the cake, if you know what I mean. That's the thing that's really going to top it off because as the old saying goes, the fish rots from the head down. Everything starts from the leader. So when it comes to Games for a Living, they have that covered. I mean, man, really... It's pretty much a no-brainer pick for me when it comes to G foul because some people like to say, oh, wow, why are you bullish on it? Market cap is so low. Well, isn't that kind of the point? I want to be there before things take off. I don't want to join in later on when G fouls at the price of a dollar. You know, I don't need confirmation to know that G foul is going to do well. Some people, they like to comment and say, oh, why don't you wait until it goes to the price of like 40 cents, 50 cents, and then you'll know that it's going to do well. Well, what the... You know, if I have to wait till that long, you know, all the potential gains lost, hypothetically, come on, man, I don't want to do that. I want to be there before the wave happens, and I'm willing to take that chance. So it's fine, in my opinion. And again, GFAL at the price of $2 isn't crazy, because keep in mind, you know, if GFAL were to go to the price of $2, considering its current circulating supply, market cap would be around $6 billion. So it's actually not that much. I mean, I want to use like some extreme examples. Now, people may think, okay, this kind of apples to oranges, but I still think it's fair nonetheless because you take a look at Shiba Inu. At one point, it reached around $40 billion in market cap. So it's way more than this. You take a look at Dogecoin. You know, at one point, it reached over $80 billion in market cap. So $6 billion isn't even like 10% of that. I mean, this is kind of like laughable in the grand scheme of things in a good way, of course, because it showcases how even with a relatively speaking low market cap, GFL still has a lot of room to grow. Because, again, due to its, relatively speaking, very low market cap, just reaching, let's say, like a $3 billion market cap, $5 billion, $6 billion in this case, it's already amazing. And I really like that when it comes to GFAL. Does GFAL have to be like the next big thing? No. You know, again, going to the price of $2, already fine by me. You know, I think that's already more than enough. Hypothetically speaking, not financial advice, though. Now, granted, Doge and SHIB has a lot more fans. You know, I totally understand that. But again... GFAL just going to a $6 billion market cap, it's like so low in the grand scheme of things. So I don't think it's crazy at all. And we have to take this into consideration. The Bitcoin ETF could be massive. You know, the number of institutional investors for Bitcoin is through the roof. Enterprise adoption also, right? Everything when it comes to Bitcoin is just so amazing as of right now. And I think that even though this year we saw it having a big pullback after reaching a new all-time high, now it's having a pretty good recovery. I think better days are ahead because with all that taken into consideration, 150,000 for Bitcoin during this bull run, that wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. And it's only fair to assume that if Bitcoin were to do that, you know, something like GFAL and also a lot of other altcoins, they're going to join that ride. And at that point, GFAL at the price of $2, I don't think would be crazy. Take this into consideration. There's also currently over 600 million crypto owners, according to crypto.com research. You know, that's more than ever before in history. So that's insane. So with all those amazing factors, GFAL can't go to the price of $2. I think hypothetically, it's very realistic. Now, it's not going to happen like today or whatever like that, because usually altcoins, they peak as a worst case scenario around 18 months after a Bitcoin halving event, which would mean around October of next year, actually, which may seem like quite a while, but it could actually happen sooner because in the other you know, hand, we take a look at how usually as a best case scenario, altcoins, they peaked around six months after a Bitcoin halving event. Now, again, this is very optimistic. I don't think it's going to happen, you know, you know, basically in October this year. I don't think so. But I think that next year, that's what I'm taking a look at, you know, 2025, because, you know, it's still some time from right now. So I still think that something like GFL still has, you know, a lot to prove. So I think 2025 is a realistic timeline for me. Now, again, not financial advice could happen sooner. You never know. But that's just what I'm taking a look at. However, either way, though, I'm prepared because if let's say it happens sooner, you know, I'm dollar cost averaging anyways, and I've been believing in GFAL for quite a while now, so it's fine. But then let's say it happens a little bit later. It's also fine because, hey, it's more time for me to accumulate. So why not? Either way, you take a look at it. It's not really a bad situation. And again, GFAL at the price of $2, still over an 80 extra here. Man, I still think that it has a lot to prove. 
but I can't wait because I'm so excited. I think, you know, when it comes to games for a living, focus on the right markets, amazing leadership, and GFAL, very low market cap. GFAL is a no-brainer pick for me, and $2, again, during this bull run, wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. And make sure to subscribe if you gain value from this video. I greatly appreciate it. It's only the captain. I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm out. Peace. Bye.